Welcome to episode 15. And this week I want to talk about loneliness. Um, I saw a post in my Facebook group, The Divorce Sanctuary, and I thought it was an ideal topic to discuss and to, I might add in a meditation at the end actually. Loneliness is one of the biggest diseases on the planet and we're meant to live in tribes. We need maybe to step out from time to time, but that isn't the same as feeling lonely. Welcome to the Mind Fuckery podcast. I'm your host, Elizabeth, author of Finding Lily and the A to Z of Emotional Abuse. I'm here to remind you that love should be unconditional. Divorcing emotionally is life-changing and that you have a duty of care to yourself. Each week, I will discuss some of the terms you may hear along this journey and I will help you understand and process what's happening. I will help you find the best habits as you start to take back the control of your own life and learn the tools to heal on a deeper level, becoming the best version of yourself. This subject is kind of comes up quite a lot in my Facebook group, loneliness, like feeling lonely, being out of the relationship, even though it's what people desperately wanted. The reality is that they turn around and there's no one. So that's what I'm going to address today. I actually um, started talking about this, I think it was 2017 or 2018. And it was coming towards Christmas and I realised you've got the combination of not having the relationship and also a time when people are coming together. So I recorded a meditation, which I will tag on to the end of this as well. Um, So if you're feeling lonely or something that you've experienced or experienced on occasions, then hopefully you'll be able to make use of this. So loneliness, as I said, is the biggest disease on the planet. It's, you know, we are meant to be together. We're meant to live in tribes. We might need to take that time out in nature or just to be on our own to recharge our batteries or reset. But that isn't the same as feeling lonely. Loneliness is like this sadness, this um, feeling of maybe depression or isolation, lack of friends or company. But have you ever been surrounded by people and and felt lonely? And that's where the loneliness comes from. You can be um, surrounded by people. So it's an inner feeling. It's an inner emotion. Having or a life purpose or finding your life purpose can be key to um, overcoming loneliness. And But loneliness after being in a toxic relationship is different. It feels lonely coming out and there can be lots of different reasons you were focused so much on protecting the relationship than you were protecting yourself you might be feeling so many different emotions anyway but you might have abandoned yourself you might have emotions of shame and there might be emotions of injustice that are coming up we're constantly being told that we were the problem and sometimes In those situations, you might retreat inside to protect yourself. And it might be that you experienced, it probably was, that you experienced gaslighting. And the loneliness is to do with uh, trusting yourself and trusting others. So it's really dangerous because with gaslighting, it's that mindfuckery, crazy making. Uh, You've been told one thing, but their actions don't match their words. Maybe you've been isolated from your friends and family. Uh, You were manipulated with information and you may, you cut them off or you were um, manipulated to not trust them, to not believe what they were telling you because the abuser is scared. Their biggest fear is abandonment themselves. And uh, so they position themselves in that place of power. So they have to undermine everybody around you. They have to challenge everyone. It could also be that you were triangulated. And with one of the big emotions that comes out of triangulation is creation of or manipulation of um, jealousy. And that makes you, you end up questioning everything. You're questioning um, relationships. The whole point of, of is to make you jealous and to you to protect your relationship with them over everything else. You might be questioning who you are uh, at the end of the relationship, not really understanding. Again, this comes down to, I, I, I quote five things that you've been abused emotionally, spiritually, mentally, 
physically and financially. And so this comes under the spiritual side. So this is your beliefs that they that you end up questioning everything about your life, whether it was true, not just your relationship with them, but your relationship prior to them, or your belief systems. You know, that, that comes, for me, that comes under the spiritual. So it might be that you're questioning all of that. And you've got this, um, the hippocampus has gone through the trauma that's happened and the abuse that was taking place, that shut down. Your gut system, you know, your intuition shut down and, um, and you're left wondering who you are and maybe questioning who you are. I remember waking in the morning and this went on for quite a long time and thinking, oh my God, I'm still alive. And that might be something that you've experienced it's very possibly that you've abandoned parts of yourself and you might not recognize that bit, but you've protected the relationship and you've protected the abuser. You were trained to do that and you were trained to ignore your needs. So it might be that you're not feeling whole. And so the goal in this situation is as part of reclaiming who you are is to become great company for yourself, to have a relationship with yourself by not being fearful of being on your own and nurturing and loving the person and, and and creating or being the person that you were born to be and it might be as i said i used to wake in the morning and think oh my god i'm still alive but it might be that when you wake up the reality sets in and you understand you know what's happened it could be that you're watching your ex step into the life you created with somebody else and stepping into your fake future. And then there's the feelings that there's something wrong with you. Feeling that shame, feeling lonely that people really don't understand what you've been through. And they might tell you just to get on with it, get over it. Haven't you got over this by now? I remember somebody saying to me, the feeling of loneliness could be due to the trauma bonding that took place and the, the fear of not knowing how to function without them. So it's, there's so much going, that could be behind these emotions of loneliness, isolation of not knowing who you are anymore, that pain that emanates deep. It really is a, a pain that um, emanates deep within your body, within your soul. And people who've never experienced this are never going to understand it. You can barely function, you don't understand, you don't understand who you've become, you probably don't recognise, I remember looking in the mirror, you know, I've written about this in my book, you know, staring back, being a shell of my former self. I really did not recognise that person staring back at me. And those eyes were dark and black. I, it wasn't me that was there. There was nobody behind uh, my eyes. It was a I was just functioning. And then, you know, along with that, with the rumination and everything else that happens, you're questioning what if and if only, you know, maybe if you'd done something or said something or hadn't, or, you know, you're constantly replaying these, the relationship. And you, if you're not careful and you don't step out of the rumination or jolt yourself out of those cycles of um, questioning, of, of thought processes, you get stuck in your head. It could be that you've got loneliness of not having anyone around you that really gets you. And really, if you told your friends and family the truth of what happened, it would shock them. And maybe that's where you are at this point. You might have seen the red flags. You saw their mask drop, I'm sure, on plenty of occasions. You saw their explosive personality, but you chose not to speak of it. You were protecting the relationship. And I talk about this a lot, you know, this could be the gift. This is where we can turn the grit into gold because there's probably a childhood wound or two or a belief about yourself that you're not good enough or you're unlovable. There's likely to be an abandonment wound. There's likely to be a wound of shame and there's likely to be a wound of betrayal. And perhaps you've experienced that through a parent or caregiver or somebody within your family. So this is where the loneliness comes from, not understanding. And once we've managed to find out who we are and 
as I said, I find out what our life purpose is. That's really key. That's something that I do um, with Soul Plan Reading is, is helping people discover why they're here. And I can tell you with hand on heart, this is my belief that you've experienced this relationship to highlight the wounds that you've got. And it's giving you this opportunity to heal on a level that you've never experienced before. Hold space for it and put out your hand like you would to support a friend or a child and embrace these emotions. The three things that I realized were helping me and I hadn't, I saw them individually. I was doing them individually, not together. And I realized that when I was grounded, I wasn't reacting to some of the um, stupid remarks and um, the letters that were coming about through about the divorce. And um, I was doing some breathing and meditation, which was what I was doing in my business. And then I realized that there were times that I really, really um, wanted to reach out and I know I couldn't. And I was having to stop myself. So I was going inwards and talking to myself and asking what I really wanted and what I needed. And that was when I realized that it wasn't the abuser. It was the belief that it was the abuser that I wanted. It was um, a child that was asking for attention. And all she needed was somebody to acknowledge that she was in pain, that it hurt, that she needed a bit of attention. And this is where you can step in as an adult. Um, part of this abuse that took place will have um, stripped you back to a child and you end up reacting in a, a very young age. So it could be three, it could be younger. I, I say three because those are usually the memories that you've got. You know, you could go back and probably find a three-year-old memory you don't tend to remember very much as a child. Um, although you might have it somewhere in your DNA, that trauma might be trapped somewhere. Uh, I remember doing some healing work a few years ago. I was trying to track down, I was working with someone and we were tracking some um, something down and it came up as birth trauma. So um, we were able to release that then. But that wasn't, I can't remember how, <laughs> how I came across that, but you know, normally most people can remember events uh, uh, from that sort of age, sort of two and a half to three years old. So it might be that you can put your hand out and hold the hand of that child and take it for an ice cream or take it to, uh, for a walk or take it to the park to feed the ducks or go and do something to feed and nurture that child. Because I promise you, if you honestly listen to your body, so that really, when it really hurts and you want to reach out, honestly, listen, sit and listen quietly for a few moments and ask what it is. And it might be that you're feeling lonely. It might be that you just need attention. It needs attention. And the attention up until this point has been with the abuser. And it's not love. It, it's been, it's abuse. It, you know, it's it's been uh, masqueraded as love. I, I love you. This is you're the most amazing person that's ever arrived in my life. You're the only person that's ever understood me. However, I'm gonna treat you like this. And, um, and then I'm gonna tell you that I love you. And this is a cycle of abuse. So this loneliness can come from so many different places and it doesn't have to be just one. You don't have to pick one and say, oh, yeah, that's that. It can be, as you heal a bit, you might find that it comes from different areas in your life. So I'm going to talk you through this little meditation, short one, see how you feel afterwards. If you're driving, then please turn this off now or tune out. Please don't do the meditation while you're driving. Find a space a bit later and for everybody else who isn't driving, we're going to sit quietly and just tune into our bodies and just see where the loneliness is coming from. Scan your body and see where you're holding it. And there might be a few of them. See if you can release the pain very gently. And at the same time, ask how old the memory is. Allow the universal white light to enter your body and dissolve the pain and remove the trauma. 
we're just going to sit, ask, or see. you might feel it. You might feel discomfort in an area. You might feel the loneliness in the area. Ask how old it is, and then just allow the white light to come into your body and dissolve the pain. It's going to come through the crown chakra, or the crown at the top of your head, and it's going to enter in and it's going to dissolve that loneliness. When we experience stress, we hold it within our bodies. Animals naturally know how to remove any stress or trauma. They shake. And you might now experience any a, a little quiver or, or something in your body. So we're just going to allow this white light to come down through our head. And then it's going to come down through the throat and into the chest. It's going to move down through your body. It's going to pass through your liver, releasing any anger. And it's going to wash over all the organs. And it's going to go through your hips, through your buttocks. This we clench in fear. And from our hips down our legs, through our knees, through our ankles, into our feet. And it's cleaning and clearing. And it's washing through you in waves. So allow this white light to flow through you. And as it's flowing through, it's releasing the trauma, it's removing the trauma, and you are going to feel calmer. The white light is washing through you in waves, from the top of your head, through your body, and releasing the trauma, the anger, the jealousy, all the emotions are going to be flushed out into the earth. But it's okay because Mother Nature knows what to do with them. So I'm going to leave the music playing. Sit here as long as you can. And when you're ready and you feel that you're awake or you can't sit there any longer, wiggle your fingers and your toes and open your eyes and ground yourself. Plant your feet on the floor. And visualize roots going into the earth, into the ground below you. And you can carry on with your day and see how you feel. I hope this is useful. I'm sending you loads of love until next time. Just sit back and enjoy. Thank you.